Okay, hi. Today I'm gonna try some um, meter preter uh, Metasploit stuff, and it's actually a plugin that is not in the official Metasploit, but in a branch that can be found on GitHub. So uh, let's see if I can reproduce this. I just reproduced it without the recording, and now let's see if I can do it again. By recording, I have Metasploit installed in other sources. Metasploit here. Uh, you can see the branch, it's my own branch. So these two commits are the ones that are not uh, on the original Metasploit. Mm, this is the latest commit on the original. So this by Rob Fuller adds Skype extraction, and this by me uh, additional outputs. Um, the Skype password hash in a format and jo that John the Rapper can understand. Right, so uh, this Metasploit, its main uh, program is the MSF console. So now I'm going to simulate a social engineering attack. So uh, that's if I trick a user to click on a malicious uh, executable. So in this case, uh, this here uh, is a Linux computer, mm, and uh, I'm gonna attack a Windows computer and try to extract the Skype hash, and then crack the hash, which is not so difficult because it's my own, or well, actually it's one person in my family there. Skype account and I know the password because I just changed it to something temporary and then after this video I will change it back so no one can hack the other account. Yeah, hello. Will you play in? No. Yeah. Okay, that was actually the person that's sitting at the Windows computer and. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, her account that I'm going to hack. So I'm going to go over to the other room then and click on this executable. First I'm going to create executable and, and that's uh, called the uh, payload. So uh, first I'm going to create this payload with Metasploit. So how do you do that? Well, uh, you can for instance... Whew, uh, uh, what's the one I used? It's Windows X64. Windows X64 meter printer reverse TCP. That's the one I used. So when when I create this reverse TCP uh, executable and transfer it to the Windows computer, when a user clicks on this executable, it's going to connect back to this computer. But to be able to do that, I have to set some parameters, namely the IP address of this computer, this Linux computer, and that's done with the lhost parameter, and um, I also should uh, specify the l port parameter, which is default to 4444. Or perhaps, hmm, maybe if I don't set it, it maybe it will just use 4444, but I'm going to set both of them anyway. Um, MSF payload is used to create this payload and what was it see if I can write Windows X64 interpreter uh, reverse TCP and host was and what is my host IP it's this 92 it's on my local lawn Uh, and the port was 4444. Alright, and X means to create an executable and write the output to revtcp.exe. Let's see if it is successful. Uh, okay, so this looks good. Uh, this has been created. Uh, Windows executable for 64-bit uh, uh, window systems. All right, so now I'm going to transfer it, and I have mounted uh, the desktop of the user in the 
Baba Win directory. So here's the desktop. So I'm just gonna copy it to there. And I have already done it, but I'm gonna copy the new one. To Baba Win. And overwrite the old one. If I just can write my password, okay. So, all right, let's go back to MSF console. Now I'm gonna set up a listener on port 4444 on the Linux computer. Then I'm gonna go over to the other room and click, uh, <laughs> click on this executable that I just transferred to that computer. Hmm. Something is wrong with the world today. No, it's started. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna specify the parameters one more time before launching the exploit. Uh, and certain parameters can be done here in the multi-handler. Uh, set host. Hosts. No, that's space like that and set port. Uh, oh, I also have to set the payload. Oh, this can be tab completed. Windows, I press tab, okay, X, meter, printer, rev, TCP. All right, that should be all. Exploit, it started, set up the listener. Now I'm gonna go to another room, and click. And when I clicked on the executable in the other room, it should have, I got this meter printer prompt now. So now I have access to that computer. And here's the process running on the Windows computer. And I can do whatever. I can, for instance, see that what happens. Uh, the watchdogs.exe <laughs> process is uh, running and that's a game. And I know, happen to know that she is actually currently running, playing that game. So I had to interrupt the game and click on the <laughs> uploaded payload executable and then restore the game. Or, uh, and what people usually do after they uh, get access like this, and it's, that's called post-exploitation, is to migrate the exploit to another process. And the process that is always on Windows computers is called explorer.exe, this one. So I could write migrate and then 1912 here, which is the process identifier number of the Explorer, but I'm not going to do that because I'm just going to do one quick thing and it, that is running uh, the Skype thing that I just showed you. Run and what is in post for post exploitation, Windows, uh, gather uh, credentials, Skype. Okay, so it found my, I have started Skype with my account, but I actually never logged in. So my credentials are not on the computer, but she, who is currently playing Watch Dogs, have logged in. And here is her uh, hash, temporary hash, which I just set in the John the Ripper format. So then I can go to John the Ripper in this window. Okay, so now it's fresh. The same thing that was uh, pasted from. And I'm gonna run John the Ripper. And now I happen to know that the password starts with princip and then four digits. And uh, this princip is actually because today is 100 years ago, the start of the Great War, the First World War. And the guy who fired the gun was called Princip, his uh, last name. And the year was 1914. And here we see Princip 1914 was indeed the Skype password for the user, the person that is currently sitting in the room here next to me. All right, so uh, we did it.
we extracted the password hash from uh, Skype installation on Windows using Metasploit and a plugin that is not uh, in the official repository but it's actually in Rob Fuller's repository on GitHub, up on GitHub uh, and uh, then use John the Ripper to crack the hash. But it was a little bit fake because I already knew the password so I, I used a mask here uh, with the beginning of the, the, the known letters of the password and then four unknown known digits at the end. And it went through all the combinations until it found the match, which was, which was 1914. Yeah, that was uh, actually it. And uh, as you can imagine, you can do a lot of other things with the Metasploit, but I'm not going to go through everything today. <laughs>